Okay, so I think I have a system worked out. And I'm just gonna, when I start a new video, I'm just gonna start reading and then read all the way through and then give thoughts. It seems to be working for me. Um, gives people a chance to, who just want to read or hear it. And then you can just skip to the end if you wanna hear my thoughts. Okay. Leonard said that rebirthing never could have happened had he not first unraveled his death urge, a process which climaxed for him in 1967. From the beginning, the idea of immortality has been contained in rebirthing. Immortality creates the certainty of safety by poisoning a t context broad by posing a context broad enough to include anything that might come up after liberating himself from his death urge leonard became fascinated with the idea of physical immortality but one problem he encountered was that the authors of most of the books he read when a subject had had died, one person, a divine science minister, sh shrimp, I forgot the 20 minutes. Set a timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, starting now. Thanks, friend. Um... One person, the divine science minister by the name of Harry Gaze, who had written a book called How to Live Forever, died on the way to the uh, on, died on the way to the second in a series of lectures he was giving on the subject at the Hollywood Church of Religious Science. Leonard declared he could not trust these people. He developed a new set of criteria. He decided not to believe anyone unless they were actually doing it. He arbitrarily picked 300 years as a minimum qualification age. This led him to the only place he knew would actually w with where actual immortals hung out. Leonard went to India in the spring of 1977, but didn't find any immortals. A female traveling companion did, however. She was guided by Babaji, who had uh, materialized to her twice before the trip. After spending seven months with Babaji, she returned to California with pictures and reports. Her transformation included having been dematerialized by Babaji for a three-day tour of the universe. As a result of hit this woman's shared experience, Leonard immediately turned into Babaji's energy and has kept a very powerful spiritual relationship with him ever since. Leonard was planning another trip to India in December of 1977, but because he was very busy, he considered canceling it. Then, when the time came to make his final decision, while he was uh, meditating in a friend's house in Houston, Texas, Babaji appeared to him and stayed for three minutes. That experience changed his mind. Leonard said it, would, it made him realize how limited his thinking was. He went to India subsequently and spent a month with Babaji. When Leonard was with this immortal, he questioned him about rebirthing. He recounts this conversation. Before I met Babaji in the flesh, I had figured out that breathing in cooperation with the mind was the key to the health of the body and mind. I had concluded that the birth of life could be the fountain of youth and therefore the key to internal life of the body as well as the mind. 
Since Babaji had mastered the internal life of the spirit, mind, and body, his body, through thousands of years, uh, though thousands of years old, has the appearance and integrity of a young man. So, one day in January 1978, I mustered enough courage to test my conclusion with Babaji. It took courage on my part because if anyone on earth could in invalidate my cherished logic, it would be him. I had tested my idea upon thousands of the world's greatest minds, but he was the first genuine immortal I had met. I said, does rebirthing produce Merijanani? Meritakana which means victory over death. Does rebirthing produce victory over death? He said rebirthing produces produces Mahamaratamahai, which means supreme victory over death. Supreme victory over death. I said, You mean since prana is eternal, the body with prana is eternal? He said, Of course and walked away as if I convert oh, as if the conversation were mundane to me the confirmation of my ideas from an actual immortal was a big deal but to him I concluded it has been simple and obvious for thousands of years to him it was a stupid question Leonard realized that Babaji was the greatest thing on the planet and he decided to go back and spend at least one month with him every year. Every time he went he said it was tempting just to stay there and forget about the rest of the world. He also said that Babaji has given him opportunities to ascend. In the course of his early uh, in the course of his yearly treks to India, Leonard has now met eight individuals who meet his minimum qualifications of 300 years in the same body. The youngest immortal master Leonard met was 300 years old. He would not let visitors closer than 15 yards. When asked the secret of his longevity, his reply was, stay away from humans. <laughs> Another uh, Bharatariki Bharataji, Bharataji was given immortality by Babaji in 56 BC. At the time, he was emperor of all of India, but according to Leonard, he renounced his kingdom and became a Sadayu, Sadhu. Sadhu? A Sadhu is a person who gives up his worldly possessions in order to practice spiritual purification full time while living off the land. Even though he has the powers of incision, uh, as ascension, Bharat, Bharatari, Bharatai, uh, has uh, m maintained a local. <laughs> I'm going to try <laughs> has maintained a local address here on the planet earth for more than 2,000 years his ashram is located in the forest uh, reserve of 100 square miles it has been reported that although the reserve reserve contains wild animals no humans has ever been attacked by them Baharatari. If anyone knows these names, please feel free to tell me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he can tell me. He's got to like voice voice it somehow. I can't pronounce it. Uh, okay. Bara Baratari. Baratari. Barati. I want to say it's like Barati. Uh, is quietly doing his job. 
He has a very soft, gentle, and innocent presence. Leonard said Bharati felt as though he had been working on himself for 2,000 years, yet he has an uh, ageless and ten tensions and tension free body. Ageless and tension free body. One of Babaji's many manifestations, according to Leonard, was Gorakanath, Gorakanath, who has trained numerous immortals. If you go to one of Gorakanath students for uh, instructions, your first lesson will be to work continuously with the mantra Om Namahara Sa uh, Om Namaha Shiva. Then, if you are serious, you may come back in three years for your next lesson. Thus, the remembrance of God's name is the first of the common practices. Then comes the awareness of the energy, energy body. For the energy body is the secret to the physical body. Becoming aware of the energy body is the key to re re reversing the aging process and mastering the health of the body. Next comes the re uh, l l l realization that the conscious use of the elements of earth, air, water, and fire, and prana, or ether, can cleanse the energy body or aura more effectively than the mind. They blow away, wash away, burn away, etc. All the negative energy concentrations for uh, blah blah, all the negative energy concentrations, for they are physically physical aspects of the one spirit. Much of what I have said in this preface preface to breaking the deaf habit can be found in somewhat different form within my published books. I thought long and hard about whether to say something totally new here, but I finally decided that I had paid my most sincere homage to Leonard in my uh, existing writing. I did not want to appear I did not want to appear in his book with anything less. If it is not already clear to you, I owe Leonard everything. Of course, I also owe him nothing. We are all part of a long trans transmission of undoing the great forgetting and reclaiming our dignity and destiny. Leonard has been a master rememberer and he has enabled others to remember. I now remember, thanks to Leonard, I could not have written my book without his coming without his coming first and leading our Revolt. Bob Fressel, maybe? Arthur of nothing in this book is true, but it's exactly how things are, and something in this book is true. Oh my god. <laughs> this book has spiders in it. Okay. Chapter one, we made it. Was it like four days? That's pretty cool. 2020. 20. Okay, so I can get. Uh, there's not really like a way to tell how many pages, how many pages was it? Uh, I can't read hieroglyphs. Anyway. Introduction. Is physical immortality realistic? The immortal yogis of this world and I are here to tell you it is. Of course, in this day and age, physical immortality is an idea you have to get used to. It is a problem that can keep you busy for a few million years. It is time for this it is blah, blah. it is time for this idea to once again become widespread. For much of recent human history, most people have been uh, immersed in mortal death Deathist, deathist, uh, men deathist, deathist mentality. Physical death, as we know it, 
today has been popular for only 5,000 years. We don't know what will happen when physical immortality becomes popular again. Our mm, uh, matter our materialistic civilization has a tendency to solidify the death urge. But immortalities immortalists Oh, geez. But immortalists reject the idea that death is an inevitable, saying instead that death is controlled by individual consciousness. Immortal, mm, immortal mentality is made possible as a function of changing your thoughts, freeing your breath, and establishing an eternal self-image. The immortals know that the death is only for people who persist in and love ignorance. Death is for people who love the super, super, superficial pleasures of the body more than the internal pleasures of the spirit. Conse conquering. The conquering death is the basic intelligence test in the physical uh, universe. Physical immortality is the first step in the practical spiritual enlightenment. Most people die before they question the idea that death is inevitable, even though they think that they are spiritually enlightened. But the idea of the physical immortality is not enough. Developing a psychology of physical immortality is the first step. The second step is to unravel the personal death urge absorbed from family tradition. The psychology of physical immortality, uh, oh geez, wow. Uh, the second step is to unravel the personal death urge absorbed by family tradition, the psychology of physical immortality. The third step is to develop mastery of the physical body, the psychology of the physical immortality. The third, the third step is where practical spiritual purification exercises come in. For example, breath mastery teaches that cleansing of the mind and body is an easy, practical, practical way. Fasting further cleanses the body. Mastery of sleep teaches, among other things, the mastery of the astral world, which most people think is the world of the dead. Water and fire purification are basic. More on, more on this in the coming pages. My purpose is not to put down the practice of the physical death. Physical death is great uh, inventation that permits people to leave planet Earth who don't like being here. Most people seem to be more afraid of living with themselves forever than of physical death. Note that you are presently... Pre <laughs> Note that you are presently presently immortal until you prove otherwise dying is more difficult than living we begin with the following affirmation which has saved thousands of people from death i recommend that you memorize it and master it through meditation i am alive now therefore my life urge <coughs> start over this is the affirmation. I am alive now. Therefore, my life urges must be stronger than my death urges. As long as I strengthen my life urges and weaken my death urges, I will go on living in increasing health and youthfulness. I will go on living in increasing health and youthfulness. Adding the words physical mortality to everyone's vocabulary is a worthy educational goal. 
the realization that our own mind is the greatest threat to the health and the aliveness of our physical body is a thought everyone deserves to have so true oh my god these simple concepts are our spiritual birthright the reason the reason more people in the western world have not conquered death is simply because so few are working on it most people have surrendered to the idea that death is inevitable and beyond our con or death is inevitable and beyond our control this popular idea is taught by most religious organizations even though the saviors or saints of all great religions have conquered death the idea is also taught in public school. We program our children for death. Even we, uh, when we trade in our unconscious death urge for physical immortality, psychology, and spiritual purification practices, we can achieve personal aliveness, youthfulness, and body mastery more consciously. War is a social ex expression of personal death but we have the opportunity to achieve world peace now. This information about physical immortality is desperately needed to realize peace in, our, in all countries. We have so many modern life support systems built into our civilization that, ma that the majority of people may be able to realize physical immortality today as they did in the days of Ram Ram and Saiti Sata Ram and Sata oh what <laughs> Ma this is getting good uh. All right well ooh juicy It's good it's almost on the last chapter I'm just going to I'm just going to read the page Rules are meant to be broken No. So good. What what time are we? At? Okay, I'm doing it. Uh, <laughs> war is the social expression of the personal death. Uh, we have uh, when everyone knew that the physical death was optional. Wow. Okay. Just calm down. Okay. Uh, blah 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 physical immortality today as they did in the days of Ram Ram and Sita when everyone knew that the physical death was optional a person with indoor plumbing hot water and a fireplace has the most uh, so so fuck so Parasatsuki, Immortal Yoki Cave, ever developed. Super Sopa Fit. Now, what is this? Define Sopa to skip. Not even close. According to Wikipedia, define Sopapia. Probably should have stopped while I was ahead, huh? No. I regret nothing. Oh, got it. Now say it. Sophisticated. Oh, jeez. I know that word. Um, and a fireplace has the most sophist... Oh, yeah, that makes... When everyone knew that the physical death was optional. A person with indoor plumbing hot water and a fireplace has the most sophisticated immortal yogi cave ever developed our religion and psychology just needs to catch up with the scientific progress the tragedy of our generation is that people are dying needlessly in ignorance just because they have never heard nor thought about the idea of physical immortality 
we could have heaven on earth if people were to were as committed to health and love and aliveness as they are to ignorance negativity negative thoughts and dying and going to heaven don't forget that the physical immortality is not the ultimate goal it is a natural benefit of being a good person and following the rules of healthy living living longer is not the goal of physical immortality increasing the quality of one's life is the goal the present time quality of personal existence in spirit mind and body uh, i wrote that wrong one's life is the goal the present time time quality the present time quality of personal existence in spirit mind and body the physical immortality releases us from the person of living under the sentence of death most people are living on death row and wonder why their life doesn't work finding immortal life in the human heart is the source of the health in the mind and body as the bible says over and over the gift of eternal life may be yours. See, for example, John 3.16. The eternal life means to incorporate the body into the conscious life of the internal spirit. All there is in heaven or on earth is energy, thought, and form. Your full divine potential exists in the here and now, just as much as it exists in the highest heaven. God is here too. There is no place, no better place to be. You can only begin this work. There is no end. You can only begin this work. There is no end. That is so true. I've been learning that the there's another thing like I I heard recently that um. Mm, I don't really know if that correlates now, but it was like it was like something like you could never fully understand or see into someone else, but because everyone has their like the the mass of a universe within inside themselves. So it was like, yeah, it doesn't really. It's not exactly what I was trying to trying to, but that was that was the first thing that came to mind. But um, I'm seeing. Because I practice uh, astral projection so much, I'm seeing heavily the correlation with youthfulness, con youthfulness, and you know connecting your your spirit with your physical body. And I mean, I see how that can make you live longer. But I also <laughs> am very into uh, fasting and seeing uh, everything we eat and everything around us as energy and vibrating at different frequencies and um, the other thing um, dry fasting I've done before so it's just like I enjoy breaking down the barriers of what we as a society are currently conditioned to believe so I'm all jazzed about this book I'm, I'm digging it it's very uh, intellectually put together. Um, and we just got to chapter one, so that's pretty cool. Um, there was something. Yeah, it's just interesting to think. He mentioned something like 5,000 years ago. People were living forever. But we can talk about dinosaurs, but we can't talk about the people who lived for thousands of years or freaking Jesus reincarnating. But people think that that's not something that they are capable of doing. Even though everyone I know who talks about the Bible are saying, you know, we have that same ability. There's like a. But then you, you say, do you think you're immortal? And they say no. I don't know. I think there's like a massive, I guess, I mean, he said it already. Like there's a remembering that's 
there, there's a veil of forgetfulness within this reality that we uh, have not learned to overcome. And uh, what's the word? Where it's a mass of people. There's a word for it. Uh, I don't know. But the majority of people have not come to focus on that. Yeah. I'm excited. I mean, to keep reading. I don't really have any like thoughts because no one's uh, had any feedback to it. But if you if you uh, if you have anything to say about the book, let me know. Good things, bad things. Hey, I'm just curious what your thoughts are. Um, I think this is great. I'm excited. I'm excited to get into this bitch. And uh. Yeah, this is just interesting. The more our bodies are clean, the longer we live is what I'm getting. So that includes fasting, that includes uh, astral projection, that includes just eating healthily, cleaning out the... I think breathing correctly is the main thing that people are missing, and that's... So I wonder how our current breath workers, I wonder like if they keep up their practice, will those be the super healthy, youthful looking people who are at 100 years old? There's no way to know that until we get to that time. Um, I'm, I'm referring to my personal friends who are breath workers, not people who are already at a, a long older age. Um, yeah, I'm just curious how my current circle of friends will progress in their practice. All right, yeah, I'm just rambling at this point. Deuces!